from the press. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I just read a short statement. Okay. Uh, as you know, uh, we have made a presentation earlier, and I think really to uh, conclude, rather than repeat our presentation, we just want to uh, emphasize that going forward, we have five major economic priorities. The first is to accelerate the implementation of the Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. We have, for the first time in history, exceeded 5% of GDP in spending on infrastructure, and we are on track to achieving 7% of GDP in three years' time. This is consistent with achieving an 8% GDP growth. Second, we want to pursue the remaining tax reforms to ensure sustainable financing for the infrastructure and human capital development expenditures. The five major packages remain. Number one, package two on corporate income tax and incentives reform. Number two, package three on property valuation. Number four, uh, package two plus on al alcohol excise. And number five, the remaining proposals under package 1B, which consists of the motor vehicle user charge lifting the bank secrecy and the automatic exchange of information. The third major goal we have is to pursue economic reforms to increase foreign direct investments and jobs. The priority bills are, number one, amendment to the Public Service Act. Number two, opening up retail trade further. The fourth is to improve implementation of the existing reforms such as the national ID system, the ease of doing business, universal health care, and the rice tarification law. Fifth, and finally, is to improve the productivity of agriculture, including distribution of individual titles to land reform beneficiaries. All these will help us ensure further GDP growth, lower poverty, and more opportunities to all Filipinos. They will also complete the President's promise in the zero to 10 point socioeconomic agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Sani Dominguez. Uh, first question, please. Anyone from the floor? Hi, good afternoon. I'm Bruce Rodriguez from ABS CBN News. Sir, um, as much as uh, from everyone we talk with businessmen and investors, there, there seems to be more clarity now on, on plans to rationalize fiscal incentives, but there's still some areas, specifically the BPOs, uh, maybe concerning some, uh, expressing some concerns rather on this. So, sir, um, you mentioned earlier that you'd be still offering incentives to uh, those industries, to selective industries that could provide uh, more opportunities for the Philippines. So, uh, would the business process outsourcing sector still be part of those industries? Thank you. Uh, definitely, uh, those investments that will create jobs and earn us dollars will be uh, part of the incentive program. Uh, I just want to emphasize also, and uh, we've discussed this with uh, Secretary Lopez, that obviously there is going to be a transition period that uh, we are, we are uh, definitely discussing. And again, I want to emphasize that we are not eliminating tax incentives. We are modernizing our tax incentive program. We want the tax incentive program to be like all others in other countries, namely that they are targeted, that they are time-bound, that they are performance-based, and uh, that they are huh? For, well, targeted and, and, and it's the in, uh, and they are uh, basically uh, performance based. So it's what other countries have. Thank you. I'd also like to uh, recognize the presence of Secretary Mon Lopez, Lopez of the DTI and Secretary Rio of the ICT. Next question.
We have one. Hi, Bo. Good afternoon. I'm Ralph Rivas of Rappler. Um, the economic team has uh, said na well, well, when inflation was high and then nung nag-tame na siya, um, the economic team has repeatedly called for uh, the agriculture sector to uh, improve. So uh, now that uh, Secretary Pinol is uh, out, so uh, ano po bang qualities ng hina na dapat meron ang next na, na agri-secretary? And uh, galing ba dapat sa loob or uh, business sector? Or, uh, Uh, has uh, filed, uh, indicated his uh, resignation from the position of uh, the DA. And, uh, you know, we must uh, say that uh, uh, he has tried his best uh, in, in achieving his goals. Uh, however, you know, there are circumstances that... Uh, have to be addressed. And uh, I, I think the president uh, will certainly look for some, some person who is uh, very intimately uh, familiar with the sector uh, and somebody who has uh, shown uh, success uh, in, in doing a job in that area. So uh, I guess those are the, the main uh, qualifications that the president will consider. Thank you, Ralph. And uh, thank you, Bruce, earlier of ABS-CBN. Now we have Jan of uh, Phoenix Television. Good, good afternoon. Um, Secretary Dominguez, um, I understand that you will be attending the AIIB meeting later this month. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, um, can you tell us the agenda of the Philippine government and um, are you looking to raise more funds for the other infrastructure projects? Uh, unfortunately, I have another assignment in the middle of the month and I most likely will not be attending the meeting. However, uh, we will be represented there by uh, Undersecretary uh, Mark Hoven, who is actually on the working board of the AIIB. And yes, we will be discussing with the AIIB opportunities for uh, their, participate, their participation in our build, build, build financing. Is there anything that's um, already in the pipeline that you can tell us? Uh, we have several uh, projects. Uh, 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 we're working with them. And uh, definitely, as I said, uh, AI, the way AIIB operates right now, is they do co-financing uh, with other institutions. In fact, our first loan with them, uh, they co-financed uh, the drainage project in Cavite. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we will be looking towards uh, not a specific loan where they are the lead, but where they will be co-financing. And we have a lot of uh, projects already on the pipeline with both AI, with both ADB and World Bank. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jan. Uh, also, would like to um, acknowledge the presence of DBM Acting Secretary <laughs> Janet Abuel. She's here. Looks like a star-studded press conference. But you know, this is historic because this is the first uh, press conference of the mini cabinet on the first day of the second half of the Duterte administration. So, what do you know? Uh, we have another question. Second half na tayo, boss. We have uh, 1,000 days left. BIM of uh, Signal. Good afternoon, BIM Santos from TV51 News. Uh, Secretary Dominguez, uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, you're con very confident in terms of passing the subsequent tax reform packages. Could you elaborate, sir, in terms of your 
outlook in terms of working with the uh, uh, incoming 18th Congress, and considering the, there have been certain hitches in terms, for example, in uh, the budget that has also affected the uh, economic growth this year. Could you expound on your expectations and outlook in terms of uh, working you know, with the I, I think that, that, uh, that budget delay, I think, is a one-off. Uh, I don't think uh, subsequent uh, Congresses will, uh, will delay the budget uh, again because it is so obvious uh, of how harmful the, this kind of delays can be to the economy. You know, for the first quarter of this year, we only grew at 5.6% uh, when in fact, we could have probably grown one percentage point higher if uh, at the lowest huh? and probably a little more. So I think uh, everybody is aware, especially the, the people in the, the legislature, that delays uh, certainly harm uh, the public. So I think that also, uh, as I mentioned in, in my discussion earlier, that uh, the Congress is also aware that the stigma of uh, loss because of support of the uh, tax measures has been proven wrong. It, it happened in the mid-2000s, but it certainly in, the, in this election, uh, nobody who supported the tax reform actually lost. And in fact, I mean, did you realize that everybody who the president support, uh, no, the, the majority of the people that the president supported won, and nobody who criticized the president won? So I think the message is clear. The president's agenda is beneficial to the Filipino people. The, the public sees uh, that uh, even though uh, taxes are higher, and these taxes really are meant to be for the uh, wealthier uh, uh, sections of our society, that they actually benefit everybody. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, the tax reform program will, will gain more traction after this uh, election. Sir, so just uh, one follow-up. If you could outline maybe one or a number of key risks that you, th you see uh, in terms of pursuing the goals that you have lined for the second half of the administration? It could be either domestic or external. Definitely, uh, one of the big risks we have is this unresolved trade issues uh, abroad, okay? And also, quite frankly, uh, the threat of uh, actually armed conflict. I mean, this is going to certainly be uh, negative uh, towards us unless there's a good resolution uh, to these uh, problems uh, from abroad. You know, we are not immune, although we are not a big trading nation, we are not immune to uh, events, negative events that happen abroad. As I mentioned earlier also, you know, one, one uh, big effect is that because there's uncertainty abroad, uh, in in in, in uh, trade policy abroad, <coughs> uh, the banks uh, take that into consideration and raise interest rates. So you know that's a, certainly a risk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I saw a hand here, in the middle. Um, Lee Chipongyan from Manila Bulletin. Um, I have uh, two questions for Secretary Dominguez and Governor, uh, Deputy Governor Diwa. Um, the first question is, um, the Islamic banking law is about to be signed by, unless he signed it this morning, by the President. So um, how, would this, um, um, how will this impact on the local banking environment? And on how will, how will it improve FDIs? And how soon do you think it will develop uh, Islamic banking in the Philippines? That's my first question. 
Well, we reported earlier <clears throat> that uh, both houses of Congress had already completed their work on the Islamic banking uh, bill. And uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, <clears throat> being prepared for enrollment before it is submitted to the president for approval and signature of the president. Now, uh, definitely, um, you still have segments of the population that are outside the conventional uh, banking uh, framework. So um, implementing this uh, Islamic banking uh, uh, law uh, to include more into the, uh, main, into the mainstream uh, uh, banking uh, framework will definitely provide for greater financial inclusion among the, um, among the population. But will this attract uh, FDIs from that yes. part of the um, I think even at the beginning of the, uh, of the Duterte administration, there were already queries coming from uh, some jurisdictions uh, that are mostly, whose population is mostly uh, Muslim or Islamic. And therefore, uh, to the extent that uh, some countries are interested in bringing their business here through uh, Islamic uh, means, could really uh, provide additional support and incentive for foreign direct investment in coming here. Okay. Um, the second question is, um, you've talked about the road to A earlier and the Philippines getting its first uh, A credit rating. So given all the good news that was discussed uh, this morning, how soon do you think uh, we will get that A? Because Governor Jokno has been saying that maybe in no, he's definitely sure that it's going to be with us in two years. And also, the, is the interagency road to a committee has been con uh, organized already as being co-chaired by the BSP and the OF? Well, uh, the working group has been uh, organized. It will be uh, co-chaired by uh, the uh, DOF BTR, Bureau of the Treasury, and uh, the BSP. We need the support of uh, all the other government agencies uh, so that we can address all the outstanding issues raised by uh, the different credit rating agencies. When we expect uh, to have an A is a question that is uh, very empirical. Why? Because the latest uh, upgrade that we received was from Standard & Poor's. Standard & Poor's gave us uh, triple B+. Plus. Uh, with a uh, with a uh, a stable uh, with a stable uh, uh, outlook, what we want is uh, uh, <clears throat> for the next 18 months that we're able to address all of the issues raised, including per capita income, the current account, uh, including those uh, issues pertaining to secrecy of bank deposits. Once these are addressed, probably we can expect some kind of a uh, of an upgrade in the next uh, 18 months. But we're still talking of two other major credit rating agencies, Moody's and, uh, and Fitch. So it's not only S&P, but the other two. With respect to JCRA, this is the Japan Credit Rating Agency, they have already given us a triple B with a positive outlook. So from the perspective of the JCRA, within the next uh, 18 months, there could, be an, there could be an upgrade. Now, if you recall, uh, we raised funds uh, through the Panda Bond market. And they gave us uh, uh, 32 basis points. A, a bond that is uh, given a 32 basis points above, uh, above uh, the benchmark is actually triple A. So as far as China is concerned, the <laughs> Philippines enjoys triple A credit rating. Thank you, Gov. Thank you, Lee of Manila Bulletin. Again, to those who just tuned in, you are watching the press conference of Patuloy na Pagunlad. This is part of the... Pag Katak ng Pagbabago pre sauna one of the three. Uh, next week, we'll have one in Cebu. Um, the one in Cebu will be about patuloy na manasakit sa pagkakaisa, which will be led by the uh, Participatory Governance Cluster and the Human Development and Poverty Reduction Cluster. And by July 17, we will be in Davao City for another pre sauna patuloy na karatagan. Uh, this uh, pre sauna will be headed by the Climate Change Adaptation Mitigation and Disaster Risk Reduction Cluster and the Security, Justice and Peace Cluster. Now we've heard questions from ABS-CBN, from Rappler, from TV5, Bulletin. Do we have one more? Uh, 
Uh, good afternoon, Sir Carl Ocampo from Enquirer. Uh, we noticed the absence of Secretary Peñol. Uh, given the circumstance, or was, was he invited to join the forum? And um, Senator-elect Bongo uh, mentioned that um, Secretary might be replaced by Dr. William Dorr. So do you have any reaction on that, sir? Do you think Dr. Dorr is a good fit? I think we should give the prerogative to the president. One last question, sir. Um, uh, is the economic team going to p push for the liberalization of sugar? The what? Liberalization of sugars. Well, we are looking at uh, the situation in the uh, domestic uh, sugar industry. And what we have seen, and uh, this is confirmed by uh, Secretary Lopez, is that the domestic price of sugar is double the world market price. As a result, uh, our food processing industry, which uses a lot of uh, sugar in its processes, has not really taken off as an industry. You, you just compare it to, say, in Thailand, where they have a very, very healthy uh, food and fruit processing industry. You know, there, the price of uh, sugar is uh, world market price, even though they are also producers of sugar. So, uh, you know, we're looking at this and saying, maybe we should really take a close look at uh, who is benefiting from uh, these restrictions here, and probably Maybe the, and the conclusion will be uh, uh, some kind of uh, liberalization will actually benefit more the country as a whole. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Carla. From the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Any more questions? Yes, one more question from uh, Bruce. You can have two or three questions. <laughs> Good afternoon again. Uh, this is for uh, Secretary Arthur Tugade. Uh, if ever you've already announced that um, you'll be offering free rides to MRT th to, uh, to students in MRT3. Uh, sir, uh, I just I received a question. So how can we maybe fund this? And um, uh, what else is that? How can we fund this? And um, how can you maintain the trains then, since we may see maybe an uptick in passengers if we offer them for free? Thank you. Uh, number one, just to give you an update, uh, we have, I think, around 5,000 students who have already uh, uh, benefited and applied for the free ride uh, as of uh, 11.30 this morning. Having said that, remember I told you earlier about the very close cooperation and support which the department within uh, the Duterte administration are extending to each other? Uh, what is the guarantee that we can sustain it? The guarantee that we can sustain it is the close co cooperation and collaboration amongst the department. And you have here not only the Department of Transportation having an interplay, but with the support of the Department of Budget and the Department of Finance. This matter has been uh, discussed, albeit uh, not at length with them, but they have extended their uh, uh, support to this project. Thank you, sir. And sir, uh, maybe just maybe to go back to my earlier uh, previous questions, anyone can answer. Um, so would uh, the business process outsourcing sector still be a priority industry for economic managers, um, especially as some of them, well, based on news, are maybe holding off on further investments or exiting? Thank you. <laughs> and if ever, if they are still one of those priorities, um, how are we maybe trying to attract them again or maybe ramp up investments in that sector? Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. As, as mentioned, you know, uh, BPO is uh, an industry that really employs a lot of uh, Filipinos. Uh, and uh, it's a dollar generator. Uh, the recent AO18 actually is just a move to bring them to the countryside. I mean, it could be a province even right outside Metro Manila. The point is to decongest. Definitely, it's still a priority industry. No, and an uh, industry that will be supported. Together with other strategic industries that we are 
really looking at, you know, industry of the future if you want to be strategic. And those are the industries that will be included in the strategic industry priorities plan. Sorry, just, just to add a, a bit to that. You know, in Clark, several BPOs have already uh, expanded their operations and have started just in, in, the, uh, in the recent months. Uh, Sutherland, one of the biggest BPOs in the U.S., uh, took up leases in Clark Global City of one entire building, you know, a 12-floor building was taken up by Sutherland. You know? So uh, I'm, I'm not sure where the information is that they're not expanding. Well, in our, in our information is they are. No, and I think what we're trying to do as well is to try to attract the more higher value added BPOs. Uh, those that aren't simply voice, but also um, uh, higher non-voice and higher value added, which will, of course, the challenge is to produce the kind of skills that these uh, higher value added BPOs will require. You know? So, um, and we are very confident that given the talent pool all over the country, not just in Metro Manila, but all over the country, in, in Clark, in Cebu, in Davao, in everywhere, no? in Iloilo, in Bacolod, I think it will continue to grow. But I think it will have to evolve from simple voice to higher value uh, BPO services. Just, just to support that, though. Actually, one indicator that we've seen quite recently is this report on regional income disparity. And we've noticed that in the, the last uh, two years, especially in the last two years, we've seen that income disparity really uh, plateaued. It used to be growing, in other words, increasing disparity. No, in the, if you look at the past uh, eight years or ten, yeah, about eight years. But now we are seeing in the last two years plateauing of that and hopefully a reduction of that. What does it mean? It means that there's lesser disparity. Uh, there's more growth, in fact, faster growth in the countryside. We've witnessed the growth of BPO, or more BPOs opening in Davao, Iloilo, uh, in the Visaya, Cebu, and, uh, and other places that, that are really signs of growth taking place outside Metro Manila. And we should really push through with this development and really bring inclusive development outside Metro Manila. No more uh, questions. Uh, Secretary Mark Villar is here to also answer questions. Sayang, nandito na rin There's one, there's one. Yeah, please, Ralph. Ralph? Yeah. Hi again. Uh, for Secretary uh, Sunny Dominguez again. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> sir, sir uh, uh, kuha lang po ako ng updates regarding sa interagency task force uh, uh, that's in charge of online gambling and the uh, POGOs. Um, uh, any updates po on the efforts as well as uh, are you talking to uh, the Chinese government, for instance, because uh, China does not like, um, they're, they're cracking down on online gambling, but um, it's allowed here in the Philippines. No, no, there is no uh, interagency about POGO. There's none. Or, uh, the, on the foreign workers. No, no, there is a task force uh, by the uh, Department of Labor, the Immigration, uh, PAGCOR and uh, the Bureau of Internal Revenue to make sure that all foreign workers who work here uh, pay the correct taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it just so happens that a number of these workers are uh, employed in the uh, POGO industry. But it's not a POGO, it's not, a, it's everybody who is who, sh who are foreigners who work here, they should be paying taxes. Just like Filipinos who work abroad who pay taxes. That's all. Now, we're not talking to the Chinese government about it. I mean, they, this is a matter of their citizens, Chinese citizens or Ethiopians or uh, British who work here and are, are uh, subject to our tax laws. That's all. First, sir, a quick follow-up, sir. So, uh, so you see the online gambling to uh, further uh, uh, flourish in the coming I, years? I, I, I have no idea. Okay, I, I'm I'm not 
an expert on, on, on ga online gambling because, first of all, I, I don't participate in it. Uh, and uh, second, the, all, all my job is, is to make sure that these people pay taxes, whether they're pogo or whether they are chefs who work in uh, restaurants, uh, whether they are hotel managers who work in, in different hotels. And I don't care about the nationality. They just have to pay tax, like all of you have to pay tax, okay? That's all. I just want it fair that, that we have a level playing field. You guys pay a tax, I hope. Do you, are, you, are you sure you pay tax? Huh? But did I, I didn't hear you. Sure, of course, sir. You do? Yes, sir. How we yeah, but you know, everybody should pay a tax. That's, that's the law. Whether you are a domestic or, you know, you're a Filipino or a foreigner. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, uh, we have seven minutes left, and we have one last question from Karen of Reuters. This is for maybe Secretary Villar, because you mentioned this in your presentation. <laughs> uh, sir, uh, the Philippines is said to be among the most vulnerable countries in the region to climate change. You touched on this briefly in your presentation when you were discussing uh, the government's flood control projects. But I'm wondering if how, how the issue of climate change figures in the entire economic agenda of the government, given that obviously it has negative effects on economic growth. Uh, the Philippines is said to be the third largest uh, contributor to ocean plastics pollution. So I'm just curious what the government is doing about it. Thank you. Well, obviously, the environment, climate change is a priority in this administration, as shown by our program. If you look at our program in Boracay, in Manila Bay, uh, the efforts that we've made have been an interagency effort. So it's really not in any one agency. Uh, what I mentioned earlier, of course, we have infrastructure projects, and a good percentage of our budget is allocated specifically to those types of uh, projects. But again, uh, I would say that uh, definitely climate change, it's on the top of the priority list, but it's something that encompasses all departments. And you can see that clearly in our projects that when we have a task force, it's inclusive of all, almost, mo almost all major departments. So um, I think that, that to answer your question, it's, uh, it's something that uh, we have first, and one of the first things that is first and foremost in our mind and something that we are addressing uh, throughout all government. Are there concrete measures that's being you know, looked at in terms of legislation as well? I can think of, uh, from our, for our department in particular, in terms of uh, resilience, the structures that we build uh, are all, we have a specific program, for instance, for uh, bridge retrofitting for, in preparation for the big one. All our schools are rated for typhoons, 250 kilometer winds. Uh, we are currently uh, assessing public infrastructures in uh, earthquake prone areas to make sure that they'll be able to, they're seismic rated. So, I mean, it's, it's clearly a part of our program and this, in, in this government is investing uh, heavily in this. Just as much as we are in traffic de decongestion, we're investing heavily in uh, uh, resiliency, which meaning that uh, for in preparation for any natural calamities, being uh, we are very aware that this, the Philippines is uh, one of the most prone in the world to these natural calamity. So it's incumbent upon the government to invest heavily on these uh, mitigating measures. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Karen. Uh, does anyone have a question for Acting Secretary Abuel? Maybe you want to ask if we have enough money? Sure. Going once, going twice. How about uh, Secretary Rio, who is about to launch his satellite? Molaren. Thank you so much for attending the press conference. Uh, there's a part two downstairs. Uh, there's an activity called Sulung Pilipinas. This, I believe, is the, the fourth Sulung Pilipinas, right? It's fourth, 16th? The fourth. And uh, downstairs, there will be um, a consultation with the business community and by 4.30, the government will respond to the uh, recommendations of the private sector for our business. Thank you so much, and uh, good afternoon to everybody.